What am I doing? This is the awful, confronting reality of Tourette syndrome for Bianca Sayers. This 16-year-old has the most severe case of Tourette's in Australia. And it's brutal watching her lose the struggle for self-control. First diagnosed with an innocent blinking tick when she was three, since then Bianca's got progressively worse, unable to suppress her violent outbursts or her language. Even with her parents, John and Lee, trying to restrain her tics, nothing can prepare you for meeting this troubled young woman. The lady I've been waiting to meet. Hello. 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 This is an important day, the eve of a groundbreaking brain operation that is Bianca's only hope of a normal life. <laughs> but Bianca also wants a chance to explain the cruelty of suffering Tourette's. Do you want to come and sit down? And why it makes her hit out and swear the way she does. It's a tough and challenging chat for all of us. Where am I sitting? I want to get rid of my tics, have a better life. I'm oh, sorry, Mum. Okay, it's all right, darling. So, how do you explain? <coughs> can, can you explain right now why you're doing that? No. <coughs> well, I. It's a chemical. Oh, ah, 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 ah. So, it's a chemical imbalance in the blood. Oops. <coughs> <coughs> ah, <coughs> it's a chemical imbalance in the brain, brain and. Um, it causes you to do sudden movements or yell out things that you can't have no control over. You don't have any control over it. So, um... Do you know why you want to hit your mum? I don't. I hate hitting my mum. I hate hitting everybody. Yeah. If I had one wish, I would take that away. Oh. Of course. And do you know why you want to hurt yourself? Because <laughs> I, I get, a, get a feeling in my, in my body and I have to hit it to make it go away. What's that feeling like? I can't explain it. It's not like a normal feeling. It's just, I just can't explain it. So now how often do you guys come up to visit? Is it every two weeks? Um. 18 months ago, John and Lee made the heartbreaking decision to send their daughter to live at this adolescent mental health centre in Brisbane. <coughs> oh, oh, Bianca no. can no longer attend normal school or do most things teenagers do. Any fish in there? No, I don't think so. But Tourette's hasn't squashed her bubbly personality. Do you want a radish? I'd love one, thank I'll you. I'll give you a big one. Oh, you're so special. Thank you. Bianca's more than happy to show off the centre's veggie patch. Oh, OK. This is where we grow the plants and plant in the ground. The seedlings, right, OK. Yeah. Just watch out for the Tourette's swing. Oh, sorry. It's OK. <laughs> uh, tell me as parents what it's like to have your, your, your eldest child very much still a girl, sent away from home. It's devastating. Uh, well, I, I'm just a simple bloke. I just, uh, I just want to have my family together. Mm. It's, it's hard. Yeah, is, is part of it the loss of control that you you know you just can't do anything. It's impossible. I can't do nothing. It is. It's like having your hands tied. There's there's nothing we can do to help her. Well, welcome to, to our home. Uh, Thank you. you know, uh, home under siege. Uh, right? As you can see. Uh, For this proud Queensland cop, the impact of living with Tourette's is most easily understood in the battered family home. Every door, every wall has Bianca's mark. This house has been patched up many times, but now John and Lee are resorting to reinforcing it with steel. And the bathroom has to be seen to be believed. So you can see, this is where Gosh, most this... of her frustration happens. Straight through the tiles. Straight through the tiles. It looks like you've had a poltergeist through <laughs> We considered an exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have discussed that. <laughs> it's a great thing about this couple that they can still laugh, but Bianca's bedroom is a reminder of all they've lost. I, I guess you really want her home, though. Yeah. It's 
hard not having her here. That'd be incredibly difficult. It is. Can you understand why you can't live at home? <laughs> no, bitch! Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, because I guess from all my tics frustrating me so much, and so I guess just going home at the moment will be too hard on everybody. So, yeah. I've read somewhere that, <laughs> that if you try and... Did you just break the table? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That was just that. Like... <laughs> I'll just clip that over here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> ah! As many as one in 200 people have Tourette's, but very few have the severe symptoms Bianca suffers. What's so confounding about this neurological disorder is when the tics can and can't be controlled. Putting on ice skates is almost impossible, but on the ice, playing with her brother Tim, Bianca's a different girl. And for a brief moment, this is a happy family. I guess Tourette's are so hard to understand because, you know, you can ice skate. Oh, fuck off! And, oh, and yet, oh, you can do that. Oh, no! Yeah. And you can dance. <laughs> How can you do that if you've got these tics, these uncontrollable tics? I guess if I set my mind to something and really focus on it, I can do it. Because it, it, inter it um, makes me... What's the word? Sorry. Okay. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I think it is the um, the love of what she's doing. She she um, it distracts my distracts my um sort of my tics, and I focus on something else. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mommy. Anything that um, comes from it within, I think. Um, <laughs> Go skating, dancing, singing, singing. It all comes from her heart. Yeah. Lee, what is it that's really upsetting you right at this moment? Seeing her like this. It's the last thing a parent wants is for their perfect child. When I when I had the anchor, I just looked at her and couldn't believe that something so perfect. <laughs> I, I made that. And then for something to go wrong, it's a, it's a nightmare. Mm. I never want that <laughs> for my child. And I love, love her so much. At the Sayers family's lowest point, they were finally given hope by this man. This is how Jeff Matovic lived his life trapped in a body he couldn't control. Two months ago, Peter Overton reported the story of American Jeff Matovic, a sufferer of severe Tourette's who underwent an operation called deep brain stimulation. It changed his life from this. How about uh, repeating, it is a sunny day in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> it is a, a sunny day in Cleveland, Ohio. To this. It's a sunny day in Cleveland. Bianca saw Jeff's story, saw his incredible transformation, and asked if a deep brain stimulation operation might work for her. I just cried and I was so amazed and I rung up mum and I said, Mummy, could they do that for me? I was, I just, I want to get better so much. I, I've gone through so much and I just hope I get a break. When you first saw her going through one of her tics, how did you react? I've got to say, when I saw that, I just, the first thing that came into my mind was, uh, we're going to fix this girl. <coughs> Big thing we're going to aim for is the motor oh, tics. No. Brisbane neurologist want. Professor Peter Silburn has done more than 300 brain stimulation operations, but mostly on patients with Parkinson's disease, never on someone with Tourette's. In fact, the surgery has never been done before in Australia. <laughs> How risky an operation is it? Always risky. Um, 
anything to do with the brain is risky. It can bleed, you can stroke, you can die. This is how the deep brain stimulation will work. Two electrodes will be placed deep in Bianca's brain where faulty neurons cause the Tourette's. The probes are connected to a battery which will be put in Bianca's side. The electrodes basically reset the misbehaving brain cells and if it all goes to plan, most of the ticks should disappear. There's a part of the brain that is not in harmony and so we have to get down to that area and reharmonise it and we do that by outpulsing it with electricity. So now tell me what the doctors have told you about what to expect from this operation. <coughs> they... dickheads. <coughs> no, um, sorry, they're fairly keen on is going to be successful but um, there's also a thing that might happen that it might not get any better too. Yeah. So... And, and does, how much does that worry you? A lot because I'm, I've, I'm dreaming of getting better and if I go through all this and it, nothing happens, I'll be devastated. I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah. I, I, just, I just pray to God this works because if it doesn't, there's nothing else. It's the big day at St Andrew's War Memorial Hospital in Brisbane. So we'll take it from the doorway, guys. Everyone here is calling it B-Day, Bianca's Day. The first step is an MRI to map the brain so they know exactly where to put the probes. Are you excited at this point or anxious? Uh, we're on a mission. Mm. We're on a mission here, so we we'll stay focused. In the operating theatre, this moment could be the difference between a normal or wretched life for Bianca. It's surgery where precision means everything. The man with the steady hands is neurosurgeon Dr Terry Coyne. He's placing the first electrode in Bianca's brain. And there it goes. We're in the zone. They can now read Bianca's brain activity on this computer. Professor Silburn's job is to make the call when the probe is in the right spot. So how deep in the brain are you right now? We're in there, baby. You're we're in there? We're in here. Right. Just deep. This procedure will take three hours, but for waiting family and friends, it's never ending. This emotion's very close to the surface, John. It is. Yes. Yeah. Well, she sleeps like an angel. She does. She looks yeah. like an angel when she's yeah. asleep, too. Yeah. Back in surgery, doctors are making sure they haven't hit Bianca's optical nerve centre or any other delicate areas. It looks like the probe is exactly where it should be. So, look, we're happy. You're happy. We're happy. Makes so good. Just about this one. We're going to just do it the other side. <laughs> okay. It's just gone lunch and the operation is over. Bianca is now moved to intensive care. Doctors turn on her battery pack to power the electrodes, but unlike many Parkinson patients who have deep brain stimulation, the success for those with Tourette's is not immediate. Hi, beautiful girl. Even so, Professor Silburn is confident. So far, so good. It's all going in the right direction, all right? The mission is on target. Do you see a day when Bianca can live at home again? Oh, that, that would be um, a huge win. Actually, to see, uh, hmm, that'd be good. See that girl back at home. Why does that make you emotional? I don't know. Because um, we can do it and we should do it, I think. No frowning. It's the next morning, and Bianca is feeling a little sore and sorry from the operation, but the ticks are already improving. <laughs> it's baking, is that? No, it'll be fine. But just a week later. Walking in running and twirling and stuff. <laughs> I love it. You love it. Look at Bianca now. After brain surgery, she's gone from a girl possessed... Come on, bitch! <laughs> ..to a sweet 16-year-old who can now walk without hitting and talk without swearing. And his, his dance is this... <laughs> so he thinks he's groovy, but he's not? Is that it? Uh, no, 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 he, he, he's groovy. He yeah. dances like Elvis. <laughs> Oh, I'm so grateful for this. Like, I, I just, I can't believe how much I'm grateful for like having this operation because it's changed my whole entire life, and I'm so gra 
proud of myself for doing it. You should be, yeah. Bianca says she feels 95% better already and clearly her family does too. And you feel like a cloud has lifted off you guys. Yes. yes. Is that how yep. it feels? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. I just think back to last week, all the tears that we shed and this week we've done nothing but smile. I think she's like a, a butterfly coming out of the cocoon. Yeah. You good? Yeah. Neurologist Peter Silburn is also thrilled with Bianca's progress. She still has mild ticking, but he hopes it will disappear within the next month. Well, our whole team has seen a young girl gone from uh, getting progressively worse with multiple medications, being institutionalised for a couple of years, and now the family unit's back together. But a very polite Bianca Sayers wants the final word, and for all she's been through, she deserves it. I just want to say to all the other people out there with Tourette's that life may be hard sometimes but you put your head up and give it a go and just keep following through because that's what I'm going to do and hopefully I'll live my life to the fullest. I bet you you will. Well done. Thank you so much, Bianca. It's okay. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.